Greetings folks, we have something completely different from Banggood and Volantex for this review. This is the Compass Unibody radio controlled sailboat, uh, ready to, what is it, ready to sail, ready to race I guess, whatever. So, so it comes with transmitter and receiver included. Uh, you may not know, but uh, I have been into sailing for a lot, lot longer than flying uh, radio-controlled planes. It was uh, my sport all during school, and I was a mad keen competitive sailor for a good 30 years, I suppose. I have a sailboard above me there uh, that I made myself. I have two radio-controlled land yachts in the shelves behind me there, so I love sailing. I have been into sailing for a long, long time. So this will be a lot of fun. I've always wanted a radio controlled yacht. So there you can see how it's packed. Instruction manual there. Nicely packed in polystyrene. It's a one piece uh, unibody uh, hull. I don't know anything about model yachts I have to say. I have made some but not radio controlled yachts. So there's the little hull, 65 centimetres long. Servo, battery and receiver are all buried in there and you'd want to hope that was waterproof somehow. Rudder control rod coming out there. Got a nice big long keel. Uh, big heavy metal keel goes in there. There's the bulb that goes on the bottom, that's a hefty piece of, of metal. That will be the mast, I guess. There's bits and pieces. There's the rudder. There's the transmitter. And underneath there's the sail and... And underneath we have... Oh, that's Probably the mast there actually. We'll find out anyway when we put it together. This is going to be fun. Let's do it. So first up we're setting up the display base uh, which three longitudinal so that's these ones here. Just slots together apparently. So now we're assembling the keel. We've got a couple of uh, rubber sort of seals. Either end of this, I guess. Uh, yes. We fit in there. Boat itself. There we go. So there it is sitting on the display stand and set up stand, I guess it is. It looks cool. Right, next up we're fitting the rudder. Conventional servo horn that goes on there. There's a flat on that side and push rod goes in there or the tiller or whatever you want to call it. This bit's a bit tricky. have to push down so I can get the little pin in here. So I've got the rudder down on the table. Pushing down. There we go. We're in. Excellent. And we need to set up the servo. Just tighten that up there for the moment. And fix it later on. Rigging it up is relatively easy, although some, uh, some things are quite a tight fit. 
here's the mast here that just slots through the the boom thing here that was very very tight so I actually had to get a soft hammer to tap that through there's three of these little hoops that go through the sail eyelets and around the mast three of them so that's the main sheet or the, the uh, rope that pulls the sail in and out and you can tighten it or loosen it by sliding that rubber ring backwards and forwards then it comes down through this uh, bracket here out through the little side fair lead and back to this hook here which is attached to the winch by these little fishing clips and the, the jib sheet same thing comes down through the fair lead out through the side there there and then back onto the same clip so the main boom and the jib boom go in and out at the same time you do have a boom vang set up here which uh, puts downward pressure on the boom to keep the uh, back of the sail tight uh, you can undo this little uh, screw here and slide that backwards and forwards to give more or less tension on the vang. Uh, you have a sort of a support stay for the jib boom there that you can tighten or let off with these little uh, sliders or whatever they're called. You can give more or less belly in the sail. You probably you usually use more belly for light wind and less belly for uh, for strong winds but yeah I just leave a little bit there to start off with something like that the jib boom pivots around this line here which can be tensioned there they also provide this counterweight here which I don't really understand uh, I'll have to sail it with and without um, and that's they say to get the center of gravity in the right spot so yachts have a center of gravity consideration as well which is interesting maybe that helps it swing out to the side or something I'm not too sure We'll have to just sail with that and find out anyway. So we have a backstay here as well which holds tension on the mast uh, opposed to this forestay down here, all adjustable up the top there and down here. Batteries are in, four AA batteries in the yacht and four in the transmitter. Turn the transmitter on. We have a little switch in here to turn the yacht on and off, turn the receiver on and off. Uh, so we have the winch here and the rudder there. There's the rudder there. We have a dual rate switch here as well, so let's see if we can get a lot more movement. And maybe not the winch. Dual rates for the rudder at least. The hatch does have a, a rubber gasket around the side here, uh, so you need to look after that, I guess, so that it keeps the water out. And when you put the hatch on, you have to make sure the lines don't get stuck in there, like that, and clip it over. We have a little drain plug here. If you get water inside, you can pull the plug out and drain it out, but that should be pretty waterproof, I would imagine. And this is the top of the mast. Uh, there's the mast crane, which uh, supports the mast out beyond the, the head of the sail support there. I did have to add this extra bit of cord here that was just flopping a bit too loose uh, luff tension there you can pull that up tight if you want to just to sort of get rid of wrinkles in the sail and the sail is sort of reinforced with these uh, what are they mylar or plastic patches there even have has sort of battens going down the trailing edge as well you just really want to tighten it up to take the, the wrinkles out not too tight to break it down for transport uh, well, it's actually, I think it would fit in most cars anyway, all rigged up. Certainly fit in my car, I'd have no problems, but uh, if you had a tiny car, uh, all you have to do is, what do we do? First, I have to ease off the winch a little bit, so turn it on, ease off the winch so that the, you get a bit of slack in these lines here. Turn it off there. Release these two lines from the little clip. Release the tension on all the lines just by the little sliders. This clip here is a bit tricky to get off and on. Don't know if it goes in that silicon tube or out of it. Little clip up here. Then the jib is totally free. And the mainsail 
pull that one out. Release the back stay. And it just pops out there. That's all there is to it. Uh, you can't even take the keel off very easily, that's just a hex bolt there, but I would keep that like that. So I'll talk a little bit about the basics of sailing just to get you started. Uh, so we have some wind over here. Let's just turn the wind on. Blowing onto the boat. Now the boat is pointing straight into the wind. You can't sail directly into the wind, that's impossible. You will need a motor to do that. You can see the sails are flapping, uh, so they're not producing any drive at all. The, the sails are basically wings as is the keel. The keel stops the boat from sliding sideways and counteracts the heeling moment from the sails and the sails provide drive. And the rudder steers it of course. The rudder is also a wing. So number one, you can't sail directly into the wind. You sort of have to know which direction the wind is all the time and you just feel that on your face and, uh, uh, and you sort of need to establish that before you start sailing. Alright, so we can't sail directly into the wind, we can sail at about 45 degrees to the wind. So we'll turn the yacht to 45 degrees. If I pull the sails in a little bit, you'll see they're not flapping so much. They are still flapping a little bit actually. So let's move the yacht around a little bit more. You can see the sails are pulling and it's actually healing the boat a little bit too. 45 degrees to the wind, we can sail out that direction. Then if you want to move up that direction, then we can tack back. 45 degrees the other way. You can see the sails are drawing and pushing the boat. Now these sails are just dead flat. Uh, they would normally have a little bit of belly cut into them. Um, so that's why this is sort of flapping at the back here. And that may be a mod that I can do is to sort of cut some seams and add a little bit of um, shape to the sails. So if you want to make your way up towards the wind, you have to do it at 45 degree angles and that's called tacking where you tack side to side at 45 degrees to the wind. And basically you have the sails pulled in fairly tight for that. If the yacht sh stops, you can let the sails out a little bit, pull them in a little bit, just see what works to get it going. Alright, now say if we want to sail directly across the wind, 90 degrees to the wind, then we can let the sails out a little bit and it'll give us a little bit more forward push. That's called reaching or beam reaching. One of the faster directions to sail. So if you want to sail just backwards and forwards across the wind, then that's the way you do it, reaching. If you let the sails out too far, once again, they'll start flapping again like that. Pull them in and they, just until they stop flapping and the boat will start going forwards. Now, if you want to go downwind with the wind directly behind you, Then if the jib boom is set up properly with that weight at the front, it will do what's called a goose wing, which means the uh, jib will go out one side and the mainsail will go out the other side. That gives you the maximum sort of area presented to the wind and give you the most speed. On a conventional yacht, this, was, this would be when you'd pop up a spinnaker as well. This boat doesn't have a spinnaker. It'd be fun to see if you could rig one on it somehow though. So three points of sailing, downwind, reaching and close hauled or tacking to make your way up into the wind. Anyway, we'll see more of this when we go out on the water. This will be fun.